echoes all my comments. <laughs> uh, I do want to echo, uh, thank you for coming on short notice. Um, this morning I had a meeting with uh, Todd Licklider, and I announced to him that he would no longer be our head men's basketball coach. Uh, this was a conclusion of a process, an evaluation, uh, something that obviously I'm monitoring every day, but at the end of every season, uh, in every sport, I sit down and, and complete the evaluation. And so this was the conclusion of, of this year's evaluation. I'm not going to go through every piece of, uh, of that process, but I will share with you a couple of thoughts, a couple of uh, pieces of, of that puzzle, uh, so to speak. First of all, some facts. These are, the, these are the easy things to talk about when you're going through this evaluation. The first fact is that uh, Todd Licklider is a tremendous basketball coach. Uh, I believed that when I hired him, and I still believe it today. Uh, another fact is that Todd is a, a tremendous person, someone of high values, values that I share, uh, ethics, uh, all those things that are important to Iowans. Uh, the, the, the facts that aren't as much fun to talk about, but, but still facts nonetheless. Uh, if you take a look at our competitive record the past three years, it uh, has not been improving. Uh, it still continues to be below where, where we would expect, uh, including Coach Licklider. Uh, our attendance and our season ticket uh, sales have continued to go down. Uh, this is not something that started three years ago, but in the past three years it has continued to go down dramatically. Uh, related to that, but, but beyond just ticket sales, uh, the financial side of the basketball equation, uh, the, the revenue from ticket sales, the revenue from contributions, the revenue from all other sources related to basketball, have continued to de decline dramatically. So those are, the, those are the facts on both sides. Those are, again, the easy part uh, of the evaluation. So in order to overcome those last three things that I mentioned, uh, one of the things that I had to determine, uh, I knew that we had to have all hands on deck. We had to have 100% uh, focus uh, toward overcoming those things by the, by the coaches, by the administration, and by the, uh, by the student athletes. Over the past couple weeks, that's been, that's been my evaluation process. That's what I've been uh, going through. Uh, and I've made the determination uh, that, that uh, under the current circumstances, we can't overcome uh, those, those things, that, uh, that, that hill that we haven't been able to climb. A little sidebar, a step aside, uh, certainly directly related, a positive in a, in a challenging situation. I've said several times over the last year, uh, I am very much excited about uh, the young people in this program, the type of people they are, the competitors that they are. Uh, I still believe strongly in this group, and if this group will stay together, if this group, uh, including the, the current student athletes and the group that have committed to coming to Iowa, if they'll stay together for the first time in my tenure, arriving in 2006, I really believe we have a chance uh, to compete in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, I, just running down Cully Payne, our starters, Cully Payne, his 25-point performance, uh, he's proven to be a leader, Matt Gatons. Uh, he's a go-to guy night in and night out. He now has two years under his belt. Playing with that, that injured ankle, he showed his toughness. Aaron Fuller, the dramatic improvement from freshman to sophomore year. Uh, I, can, I look forward to the same thing. He's proven to be a Big Ten scorer. Eric May, I think, has potential to be one of the best athletes in the Big Ten. Jared Cole, a senior, a leader. Uh, you know, his perseverance of an injury. And that's not taking away from Brennan and, and from uh, Andrew and, and Devin. And then add to that the four young men uh, who have said they're, they're going to come to the University of Iowa. I don't watch our recruits play. Uh, you know, that's what the coaches do, and I think many, many uh, of our fans do. Uh, but, uh, but by all accounts, they're a terrific group, not only basketball players, but, but young men. Um, so now back to kind of the, the broader discussion, the broader topic. Understandably so, under the circumstances, uh, there's a lot of speculation and desire to say, you know, whose fault is this? Why isn't this? Why hasn't this worked? Uh, I would say you can place some of that on me. You can place some of that on Todd. You can blame some of it on bad luck. Uh, wherever you want to go, uh, you know, you can come up probably with a, a way to defend that that thought process. In the end, it doesn't really matter. In the end, it's my responsibility to create an environment for our, our basketball program, get this basketball program back on track. Uh, and I'm not excited about how we've gotten to this point or how I have to proceed beginning today. <coughs> but what I am excited about is, is uh, going forward and, uh, and taking this, this great
great program, rich tradition. Uh, you know, I, I think about our current challenges. Our current challenges are real, uh, but they're short term. Because if I look at the long term uh, opportunity and the positives of this program, this university, they still all exist. We have a, a great university. Uh, we, we live in a wonderful community. Uh, it's the Hawkeye State. It's a great state where uh, the Hawkeye support uh, is as strong as anywhere in the country. Uh, we, have, we have a rich tradition in basketball, student athletes, uh, coaches, uh, administrators, etc. Uh, we have a, a, an incredible commitment, not just during my time, but certainly continuing in my time financially to the sport of basketball. The, uh, the, the annual reports that come out of the federal government rank, you know, they, you can break those down. And in terms of basketball support, the University of Iowa is fourth in the Big Ten after Indiana, uh, let me see my list here, Indiana, Michigan State, and Wisconsin, the University of Iowa invests the fourth most in men's basketball. If you walk out of this building, uh, you can see finally underway uh, a $43 million commitment to taking what is still one of the great arenas in the country, uh, but it's 27 years old, and it needs... Uh, several pieces added to the puzzle, and those pieces are underway. Uh, we're in the Big Ten Conference, uh, arguably, in my opinion, I'm a little bit biased, uh, the best conference in America. And then again, just the great fan support. Uh, we haven't seen it in Carver for the last couple of years, past several years, uh, but I know uh, that it won't take much to get that arena full again and rocking. Uh, even in the time, in 2006, my first year here, there were still several games during the Big Ten season where there were 15,000 plus. And I know, I, and many of the people in this know, that uh, when that, when that arena is full, uh, there's no better basketball environment in America. The next step, uh, the search begins today. Uh, what am I going to be looking for? Uh, the same thing I was looking for when I hired Todd. And Todd had uh, these qualities. Uh, and we're going to be looking for a person who's a proven leader, a winner, someone who has competed for championships, someone who's uh, committed to student athletes, meaning uh, they have to excel on the court, but they also have to be committed to earning a degree from the University of Iowa. Someone who shares the value systems of, of our state, of our university, and, and me personally. Uh, and then somebody who's just going to take this talented group, uh, convince them that they can do this, and, and bring them into next year. And, and uh, with as little, it's going to be disruption, but with as little disruption as possible, uh, get, get back up and running. There's no timeline. I know everybody wants to know when you're going to hire. And, it, and the answer is I'm going to hire someone as fast as we possibly can, but not at the expense of finding the right person and, and the right fit. Uh, as in the past, and uh, Phil stole my thunder, uh, I'm not going to be holding any more press conferences or reacting every time there's a rumor. And I'm not doing that uh, to prohibit all of you from doing your job. That's not my goal. My goal is to allow me to do my job, and that's to go out and find the best fit. Uh, for a coach uh, at the University of Iowa. So uh, that's, uh, that's both uh, a recap of the, the evaluation process and uh, of the anticipated process I'll go through in, in hiring a new coach. So happy to take questions. What's 